All right, today we're looking at the Radeon HD 5870, but this one is from XFX. Now, XFX has been making graphics cards for NVIDIA for a long time, but they just recently got into making them for uh, AMD, and this is uh, the 5870. This card is a monster, very, very fast. It's basically like a 4890, but like on steroids because it pretty much doubled all the important stuff, double the stream processors. So you had 800 ALUs before, now you have 1,600 ALUs. They doubled uh, the texture units. You had 40 before, now you have 80. And they doubled the raster operators. You had 16 before, now you have 32. Okay, so very, very impressive. Uh, uses a very similar GPU. That's still uh, the same. The core clock is the same at 850 megahertz, but uh, 1,200 megahertz memory, and it's GDDR5, so that's four times pumped, it's quad pumped. That means that effectively, at DDR, that's 4,800 megahertz, which is 4.8 gigahertz for memory. It's crazy. Uh, so very, very fast GDR5. It's got a 256-bit uh, memory interface, and it has and one gigabyte of frame buffer. So uh, pretty much, it's a pretty powerful card, and it's definitely you know a good jump above the 4,890. This card is faster uh, than the fastest single GPU NVIDIA cards, and the only card that's actually faster than this card right here is going to be the GTX 295 and the 5970, which is basically a dual GPU version of this. So that's really fast, uh, but it's also huge. It's also important to note that this card, although it is not as big as the 5970, is massive. I mean, look at the size of this graphics card. I believe uh, it's 11 inches, so it's really, really big. Uh, don't drop it, and uh, it make sure it fits in your case, because in a lot of cases, it's not, it's not going to fit at all. Uh, just to give you an idea, just to show you, Real quick, I'm going to pull out this motherboard over here. I'm going to sit it down just so you see how, how far past it goes on a standard ATX motherboard. Uh, so this is your standard ATX motherboard. And look at that. Look how much space it's hanging over. Um, so if you have one of those motherboards as the SATA port's pointing up, it's not going to work. You need to have uh, sideways facing SATA ports. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this thing. I'm going to give you a, uh, a quick tour about what you got on this. Now, first of all, it's really pretty uh, compared to the other 5890s. Uh, they're pretty plain looking. This one's a little bit prettier. It has a couple stickers. Uh, you will note that over here in the front, uh, you do have dual DVI ports, so that's really cool. And you also have a display port and uh, a HDMI port. So that means that you can run up to three displays on one of these cards, and that's really cool because you have the Ifinity system from AMD and from ATI is a new, new technology. Basically, it's going to let you do a full resolution uh, screen, but separated into multiple screens. So you can do 2560 by 1600 on one screen, on another, and then on another one, and then it's all together. It's not separate. It's not 25, 2560 by 1600 across all three screens. Each one is that high resolution. So you get a, an ultra high resolution display. Uh, and if you have two of these, you can do up to six screens. If you do a third one, uh, you get the point. It just keeps going on and on and on. And you can end up getting up to, I think, 12 monitors in total or 10 monitors. Uh, so if you can afford to do that, more power to you. Uh, for general users, though, you can definitely have up to three monitors on here. You can use your HDMI, send it to your TV, and then have two two dual link DVIs. These will do 2560 uh, by 1600. Uh, they will do 120 hertz, uh, so that's very nice as well. Uh, also important to note, whole new body on this thing uh, is a whole new cooler design. If you were to take this cover off, there is a massive heat sink. It starts right here, and it ends right here. This entire thing is one big GPU heat sink, and it goes all the way from top to bottom. Fan goes through here, blows hot air out the back, through here uh, and also blows hot air out through here. Uh, now, besides that, this thing does support uh, quite a few uh, nice little systems. It does support DirectX 11, so this is the first DirectX 11 video card uh, that's mainstream. It does come with a copy of Colin McRae's Dirt 2, which is the first DirectX 11 game. Uh, that will be available d December 11th, 2009, I believe. So that means that you're buying this now. It's not going to come with the game, but it does come with uh, a, a coupon. And basically, they're going to send it to you, and it comes with a serial number. You got the game, you're going to be Competing with DirectX 11, which is extremely impressive, uh, brings some new features to DirectX. Now, this also supports OpenGL 3.2, Direct Compute 5.0, which is kind of like CUDA, but for AMD. Uh, it also supports the ATI Avivo, uh, which basically is their decoding for Blu-rays and for high-def video. So if you want to play videos on here, obviously, this is a very powerful card. It's not going to have a problem doing a high-def video. It probably won't have a problem doing 10 high-def videos, but uh, it is going to give you extremely uh, high-fidelity playback. It's going to give you... Uh, 7.1 channel HD audio over your HDMI. It's going to give you HDCP, which is high bandwidth digital content protection. It's going to make sure that your Blu-rays are playing, are going to go through your HDMI cable and make it to your TV and actually show you something rather than 
some DRM technology blocking off your, uh, your video, which is not cool at all. So very, very nice card. Again, it's fully featured. It's very big. It's extremely fast, and it's definitely faster than the GTX 285, which is the uh, NVIDIA's highest speed single GPU graphics card that this is directly competing against. And I'll show you that exactly right now because we're going to look at some benchmarks real quick. Uh, all right, so here are the benchmarks. First, uh, the setup. Core i7, 975, 6 gigabytes of 2000 megahertz Corsair Dominator GT. Uh, the 975 is the 3.33 gigahertz stock. I did not overclock it. Uh, the memory is at CAS8. And we did this versus a GTX 285 and versus a 4870. Uh, and because this is a high-end card and it's such a, just like a big card, most people are not going to be playing this at a l low resolution. If you have a tiny little monitor, even for like the most advanced games, except for Crisis, Crisis never counts for anything, even the most advanced games, the newest games, you do not need this card. This is for people with big monitors. 1920 by 1200 and 2560 by 1600 uh, are basically what you want to be using this card for. If you're doing it for more than that, you're just going over the top. You're one of those people who just wants to get everything. And hey, that's fine. If you want to spend your money, go for it. But not necessary. Now, first game, Fallout 3. Uh, not traditionally a very taxing game. Maxed out settings, 4 times AA, 15 times AS. Uh, the 4870 managed 67 frames per second at 2560 by 1600. The 285 managed 76 frames per second, but the 5870 trumped them all at 80 frames per second. Next game, Crisis Warhead. Enthusiast, which is the highest settings, the game could not handle filters. If we threw filters on it, it would every card would be completely crippled. Uh, so we did minimal filters, 2x AA. Uh, it wouldn't handle AF at all or AS. Uh, it just it didn't work at all. So. Um, it would literally cripple the card. So we are using the highest settings, but we're only using uh, 2XAA, so no eye candy. 4870 managed 18 frames per second. The GTX 285 only managed 19 frames per second, but the 5870 actually managed 23 frames per second. That's getting close to that, like 30 same frames per second, like playable area where you're like okay with it. So um, very, very powerful. You do see a nice jump there. Now the last game, Left 4 Dead, obviously, uh, this is Half-Life 2 engine. It's going to be maxed out on everything. I mean, you literally go through the list and you max out everything because the card will definitely handle it. Uh, the 4870 produced 54 frames per second. The 285, very impressive, 80 frames per second. But the 5870 still trumped it at 82 frames per second. So very, very, very fast graphics card. Uh, incredible benchmarks. It is the new fastest single GPU card on the market. Uh, and this one in particular is a stock clock. So 850 megahertz core clock, nothing special. There is an overclock version. I'll do the review on that when I get it. Uh, but very, very, very nice. Uh, last thing I want to tell you guys, this is compatible up to three-way crossfire. Uh, so right here, you do have your crossfire uh, bridge that does support it right there. It is PCI Express X16 2.0. And as far as power goes, two six-pin PCI Express connectors right there with a minimum 500-watt power supply. If you want to do crossfire, I recommend above 600. That's what AMD, I recommend a little more, maybe like 750. These cars are pretty power hungry. Uh, so, and you need four six-pin PCI Express connectors. So very sweet. Very big card, over 11 inches. Make sure you have enough space in your case. It's the ATI Radeon HD 5870 by XFX. Have any questions, feel free to email me, and I'll see you guys next time. If you want to get more information on the XFX 5870 graphics card, go to com.puter.tv and type in XFX 5870. For Computer TV, I'm Albert.